We all know why Zach Wilson lost his job. And it wasn't because he played like crap against the New England Patriots a week ago. It was because after they lost that game in New England, Zach Wilson would not take responsibility for his bad play. Took the breath out of his teammates, took the breath out of the fans, and then Robert Sala had to make a decision. Do we bring him back against a really bad Chicago Bears team? Or do we give Mike White a chance again like we did last year when Zach was hurt and he put up a 400 spot? Now his jersey, his cleats, and his gloves are in the Hall of Fame. Zach Wilson is definitely never going to see the Hall of Fame the way he is playing. But the players really love Mike White. And you saw it after the Chicago game. And we could go into the ins and the outs of the game and why the Jets just completely dominated the Chicago Bears at MetLife Stadium. But everybody thought that was going to happen. Justin Fields did not play in the game. Trevor Simeon was the starting quarterback for the Chicago Bears. Jet fans... Do we all remember Trevor Simeon? He played one game. One quarter. (laughs) For the New York Jets. There was no chance Trevor Simeon was beating that defense. If Mike White pulls off a win in Minnesota with that crowd of craziness screaming, if Mike White and the Jets come out of Minnesota on Sunday, you will not see Zach Wilson for the rest of the season. It is an absolute embarrassment how he didn't take responsibility against the New England Patriots. Absolutely embarrassing when Mike White was stepping off the field and you see Joe Flacco giving him a coat and Strev standing on the sidelines they're all looking at iPads except the crybaby himself Zach Wilson who was sitting at the end of the bench wondering why he lost his job and you see the players you see how close they are with Mike White you see how much they love Mike White at the end of the game when he was doing all these interviews you have all these jets coming up to him hugging and flexing and you didn't see that when Zach Wilson won a game it shows you why Elijah Moore wanted to be traded now, I'm not a big Elijah Moore fan because of the whole anti-semitic thoughts I'm really not a big fan of his but the kid is a great player And when you have those type of offensive players, you need to use them. And Zach, for some reason, has not figured out how to use these guys. Zach Wilson, who's ranked almost dead last in every offensive statistic. And Mike White, who's only played one game. And his passing statistics are amongst the league's best. Or in the middle of the pack. That is alarming if you're a Jet fan. If this team gets into the playoffs with Mike White, I could see the Jets in the offseason trading Zach Wilson. Definitely a possibility because this coaching staff has done well with Joe Flacco, has done well with Mike White. Zach Wilson is the one one they can't coach. A lot of that has to do with the way he is. His stubbornness. He doesn't want to take accountability, responsibility for what he is. But Speedy, he loves watching films. He can watch it all he wants. He still has to improve on it. A lot of what he's missing is simple stuff. Is it something that you always see on? on film. He's missing short throws, screen passes, slant routes. These aren't the most complicated things. It's it's not like a case like Baker Mayfield or Jimmy Garoppolo that's more of a basic type quarterback that doesn't have a lot of arm strength. Zach Wilson can make those tough throws, those throws on the run. What he's missing is the simple ones. And in a system that revolves around yards after the catch, a system that revolves around a lot of accuracy, it's very hard for those other players to strive in that kind of thing. You saw Elijah Moore get yards after the catch because Mike White was placing the ball in a good spot. Garrett Wilson, 95 yards in that game and was getting a lot after the catch too. Now, Mike White doesn't have the big arm like Zach Wilson does and doesn't really have the deep accuracy. He doesn't need it. But you could get away with it with those kinds of concepts because of the scheme in some instances. Now, you're right. The Bears defense is awful. So we have to see him do it against Minnesota, who their defense in the secondary isn't great, but their front seven is good. And Their defense is awful. They have Eric Kendricks, who is a good coverage linebacker. They have Harrison Smith, who's a good safety. And what do you think the Jets offense is going to do? They're going to try to keep the ball away from those defensive players. It's not like they have depth depth like the Jets do in every single area of their defense. Right. I mean, Rankins is coming back this week. The offensive line is going to be at full strength. You have George Font coming back this week. The Jets are going to be at full strength this week. In the last five games of the season, they're going to need every single player on this roster to help out. I think Mike White is going to take this team where they need to be, and that's the playoffs. I don't think they're going to win a Super Bowl with Mike White, but I've seen crazier things. I've seen Nick Foles take the Philadelphia Eagles all the way to the Super Bowl and knock off the New England Patriots and the Tom Brady's of the world. To think that Mike White can't do it, he doesn't have to have a big arm. Nick Foles didn't have a big arm. You don't need to be a prolific superstar at the quarterback position because we've seen quarterbacks win. So to sit here and think that a backup quarterback, a quarterback that's accurate and can make every small stupid play, Zach Wilson can't, 
You can absolutely win with them. I think the Jets have an opportunity this week to prove to everybody that they can compete against the best. And if they knock off the Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota, which, by the way, the Jets are a top three away team in the NFL, that tells you one thing. The Jets could be away for the whole playoffs. They have the confidence to go into any stadium, Kansas City, Buffalo, Baltimore, Miami, Cincinnati. They could go to any one of those stadiums for all of the playoffs. And the Jets could absolutely win those games. As a Jet fan, I would rather the Jets play away games all the way through the season and going into the playoffs. Why? Because it gives them the confidence. They're young. One of the top three young teams in the NFL. Their best players from Sauce Garner, 22. Elijah Vera Tucker, 23. Brees Hall, 23. They're not even in this season. Just imagine what this team's going to be next year. This team is ready to win this year. Next year, they're going to be even better if they could stay healthy. It is scary what the Jets could be. And maybe Zach Wilson is not on this roster next year. And he probably isn't, the way it seems. Now, Robert Sala is trying to protect him. He's saying that he believes Zach Wilson will see the light of day on this team again. He is one of the leaders. He's a guy that we look up to and we look for him to step on the field again as the New York Jets. I think he's just trying to make sure that the press doesn't bother him or bother them when they're making a playoff run and a playoff push. If Mike White wins on Sunday, which he very much could, you will not see Zach Wilson anymore this season. Odell Beckham visits the Giants and the Bills and will visit the Cowboys on Monday. What does that tell me? I think Odell Beckham should go back to the Giants. He never wanted to leave the Giants. Gettleman didn't want him there anymore. The Giants had one of the best offensive weapons in in the NFL at the time they decided to move past him and trade him to the Cleveland Browns. He never wanted to leave the Giants. Never. He goes to the Browns, couldn't stay healthy, and then gets traded to the Rams last year. Did win a Super Bowl, but almost was the MVP of the Super Bowl before he tore his ACL. Befriended Von Miller. Von Miller believes that he can talk Odell Beckham into going to Buffalo instead of the Cowboys or the Giants. I don't think the Bills have any chance, any shot, to getting Odell Beckham. I think it's between the Cowboys and the Giants. He knows that division very, very well. He made his unbelievable catch on a Sunday night against the Cowboys. He knows who the Giants are. He knows what this organization's all about. I'm sure he likes Dable. I think he's one of the best offensive minds in the NFL. I think he fits better with the Giants because he's going to see more balls. Slayton's not 100% healthy. Shepard's out for the season. Shepard's one of his best friends. The Cowboys could use Odell Beckham. Yeah. Gallup over there and CeeDee Lamb. The Cowboys have a chance to win a Super Bowl this year. Do I think the Giants are going to win the Super Bowl with Odell Beckham? Probably not. And I know Odell Beckham wants to win a championship, and his best chance to win a championship is with the Bills. But I don't think he wants to go to Buffalo. I don't think he wants to play in the cold. That's why he moved to L.A. That's why he wanted to be traded to L.A. He wants to be in the heat. Where does he fit best? That would be Dallas. There's a dome, and he has a chance to play in front of all those crazy fans. It's probably going to be the Cowboys. If I was Odell Beckham, i pick the Giants. I'm the number one target over there. You can help a young quarterback become more of an offensive throwing quarterback than a running quarterback. This has been a huge problem for Daniel Jones because he hasn't had weapons. You look past all the things that Odell Beckham did in the past as a Giant. All the stupid things. Pissing on the logo. Talking to Annette. He fighting was, with Josh Norman. <laughs> fighting with Josh Norman, fighting with Tom Coughlin. This is a guy that absolutely was a New York Giant. He is a New York Giant. He eats, sleeps, and breathes Giant football. You're a Giant fan, Speedy. Where do you want him to go? I am hoping he comes back to the Giants. Now, mentioned last week, I think he'll end up with the Cowboys. Feels like a Jerry Jones type move plus a warm weather move. Now, there's benefits to all three. Being he won a championship with the Rams, how actively is he seeking that in comparison to p- previous years? Buffalo still has the best chance to win the Super Bowl. So if he's still seeking that for his legacy, Buffalo's the place to go. Dallas, bigger name. Jerry Jones there, the endorsements. He's going to get all the publicity he wants. He loves the publicity. Hold on. Isn't Jerry Jones a racist? Is that what LeBron James says all the time? Because he was 14. 14- 14 years old, he was protesting segregation when he was 14 years old in 1957. Are you kidding me? Yeah, and the irony is LeBron grew up a Cowboys fan. Because he's a front runner. He likes the Cowboys and he likes the Yankees. Yep. Two teams that actually won in the 90s. Nevertheless, Odell's going to get the publicity and the fame definitely with the Cowboys. But the Giants give him the best chance to be a number one receiver and maybe get one more good contract before he retires, too. Maybe a three year deal, four year deal worth maybe $15 million a year. Yeah, he's not going to get $20 million a year anymore. He's older now and it's a lot of injuries. 
injury issues, but I think he can still get a $15 million a year for about three years. I think that's a fair contract, and if he wants the money, that's the place to get if it. If he's 100% healthy, he's going to get the money. Now, is it going to be from the Giants? I don't know. Yeah. The Cowboys will definitely give him that money, and yep. Zeke will not be there next year. They have Pollard there. He's still under contract, and if he isn't, they can extend him. He's not as expensive as Ezekiel Elliott, and Odell Beckham still has three or four good years left in the NFL. With his route running and his ability and his breakout speed, I think he could still play in the NFL at a top level. The question is, where does he go? Does he stay in the NFC East, somewhere that he knows the division as well as anybody does? Or does it go to the AFC East, where you have to contend with the Colt, the Jets, Miami, and the Patriots every single year. If I was him, I'd stay in the NFC East. I can't see him going to Buffalo. Because he already won last year. I don't know if the championship is as big of a priority as trying to either rebirth his career with the Giants, which I think he has the best chance to do, or just make himself a big name again with Dallas, which the fame and all the popularity they get will help that cause. I think the Cowboys have the best chance to win this year out of all those teams. Everybody says it's Buffalo. We don't know what Josh Allen is. We don't know if he's 100% healthy. If he's not 100% healthy, there's no way in hell Buffalo wins because They have no running game. Their running game is Josh Allen. They don't trust Singletary. And going into the playoffs, what wins championships? Running games and defense. They have the defense. If healthy. They don't have the running game. Josh Allen cannot be depended on in the playoffs. Teams know that he likes to run. They'll clog up the middle and make him throw the ball. And by the way, his arm isn't healthy. After the Jets and Huff tortured that arm throughout that game. I don't know how good Buffalo is now because of Josh Allen's injury. The Giants have nothing. They have Saquon Barkley, an offensive line that's not healthy. They have a defensive line that's not healthy. Secondary that's not healthy. And isn't that good anymore? I think Odell should go to the Giants just because I think he wants to be there. But if he wants a win, I go to the Cowboys. All right, Speedy, our three for all picks of the week, baby. We'll start with the Tennessee Titans at the Philadelphia Eagles. 44, the over-under. A.J. Brown revenge game. But I am taking his former team. I'm taking the Titans. I usually favor when it comes to good coaches, knowing they're former players. Mike Vrabel's a good coach. I usually favor the coach in this one. The Titans defense has been very good this year against the run. I think they have the front seven to contain Jalen Hurts from running, too. And the Eagles have had issues stopping the run, too. So I think Derrick Henry has a nice game. So I'll take the Titans on the under. Oh, I have the Eagles in this game. Jalen Hurts has a big game. A.J. Brown has a big game. Smith has a big game. I like the Titans' defense. They're not going to be able to run the ball as well as they have over the last couple of weeks. Derrick Henry will give you 18 points in your fantasy league. He might have a touchdown because they like to use him in the red zone. Tannehill's a horrible quarterback, and I don't trust Tannehill to win the big game in Philadelphia. Give me the Philadelphia Eagles on the under. More revenge coming. The Miami Dolphins and the San Francisco 49ers over under 46 and a half. Two former running backs on the Dolphins taking shots at the 49ers. Mike McDaniel there, but I'm going to still trust the 49ers in this spot because they can stop the run. They are the best run defense in the league. They're the number one overall defense in the league, and I do think they'll be able to contain one of Hill or Waddle enough to be able to make it harder for Tua. That offensive line, interior especially, is going to be a tough matchup against that Eric Armstead and Javon Kinlaw. So, I like the Niners in a close game in this one. I'll take them on the over. I'm going to go with the 49ers, even though I think this is going to be a very close game. I wouldn't be surprised if Tua comes out a winner in this game. They have the weapons. They have Waddle. They have Hill. They're going to be able to throw against this team. The secondary, that's the weakest part of the San Francisco 49ers defense, because they have young corners and a young safety. I think it's definitely going to be San Francisco's game to lose. I think Jimmy Garoppolo do enough. I think they'll be able to run the ball in this game. Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel is just a fantastic player. He isn't 100% healthy, but I think they're going to use a lot of Debo Samuel in this game because he can do so much in the open field. Give me the 49ers on the over. From players getting revenge to teams getting revenge. AFC Championship rematch. The Chiefs at the Bengals. 52 and a half the over under. Sorry, I don't think there's revenge end here because it looks like Jamar Chase is going to be back this week. I'm going to take the Bengals here. Their defense has been really good, quietly good this year. Top seven in a lot of categories. Their secondary has improved. I like their corner size against the Chiefs' smaller receivers. Kelsey, I think, has a nice game, but they have a lot of receiver injuries. The Bengals getting those receivers back against the Chiefs' young secondary. I like them at home. They end the Chiefs' winning streak. I'm going to take the Bengals on the under. I have Kansas City in this game. I think Kansas City is going to go into Cincinnati in that nice little cold breeze and show everybody why they they're the best team in the AFC right now. Patrick Mahomes will do enough in the game to make the plays that he needs to do to keep his team in the game. I think Kansas City is the better overall team. They've been the better overall team throughout the league. The only team that's been better than them this year has been Philadelphia. They're the best team in the AFC. I expect them to win this game. I expect them to win out and only lose two games this season. Give me Kansas City on the under.